Welcome to Power Today with internationally acclaimed pastor and evangelist, Brother R. W. Shambach. From tent revivals in America's urban centers to major venues around the world, Brother R. W. Shambach touches millions of lives daily with his message of hope, proclaiming the saving, healing power of Christ. And now, with over 50 years of dynamic ministry service, he is bringing this life-changing gospel into your home. This is Power Today with Brother R. W. Shambach. I want to read something to you from the book of Acts. Now, at the very beginning of the book, it says the Acts of the Apostles. But I like to change one word. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. And this is the only book in the Bible that has not ended. There has no ending to it. Because that means the Holy Ghost is still acting. And he's still performing the miraculous and the supernatural. I want to read from the third chapter of the book of Acts. First verse. If you have your Bible, you can follow me, but listen as I read it. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Now, that's the first miracle. They were praying. That's how Pentecost started. Being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they had laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask for alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us! And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He didn't know what he was going to receive, but I, I, I underlined the word, he expected. He was expecting to receive something. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee, or give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him, him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. They broke up a prayer meeting. I'd like to see some more prayer meetings broken up. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. I would like to suggest in your devotional time, read the first five, six chapters of this, and you will see how miracles played a very important part in the establishment of the church. In the third in the fourth chapter, let me just read a little from this. Verse number 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, I believe we need a revival of boldness. I'd like to see God's people get bold and not be ashamed of what they believe and let people know that it's for today just like it was 2,000 years ago. 
When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. What a testimony. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle which hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. He's doing it again. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, ye judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and we have heard. Bow your hearts and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the reading of the Holy Scriptures. The anointing of God is already here. You can sense it when you walk into this auditorium. And that anointing destroys every yoke. People are here from all over. Many of them are here for a miracle. Physically, some spiritually, some in their family relationship, some in their mind. Some need to be delivered from demon forces. And they've come not only to hear the word, but they've come to see God perform a miracle in their life. Lord, I've been praying, let this be the night. Don't allow one soul to leave this place disappointed. But let them leave here tonight singing a new song. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. And everybody said amen. amen and amen. Many of you, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but many of you have heard me tell the story, especially on TBN, of the greatest miracle that I ever witnessed was in A.A. A. Allen's meeting. And a lot of people, when I tell that, they come to me, it's church folks, they said, did that really happen? I said, uh, no, I'm just telling a lie. <laughs> Sinners will believe what you say, but it's church folks that don't believe it. Where be all your miracles? When we were in Birmingham, Alabama, I'll never forget it. I'll just paraphrase it. A mother from Knoxville, Tennessee came to Birmingham, Alabama with her little son, four years of age, that was born with 26 major diseases. He was born blind and deaf and dumb, and his tongue hanged out of his mouth, lay on his chin. He had deformed Lungs, deformed liver, deformed heart. Only two and a half chambers were functioning in the heart. He had no business to be alive. And she told me, she said, Brother Shambach, I preached the afternoon service. We called that the faith clinic to get him ready for the operating table tonight. Many of you need an operation tonight. 
And I've been praying about this. Let me go on just a little bit more about the story. But she came to me, and in my spirit, I said, if God kept this boy alive four years, then he must be going to do something for him. Because the doctors told her that that boy would never see his first birthday. And he's approaching four. Both arms were deformed, matted together, elbows protruding up into the stomach, both legs deformed, the knees touching the elbows. He was in a fetal position. Expecting that child to die any moment. He was born without male organs. And he was born without feet. Twenty-six major diseases. And that woman stayed for a week, like some of you are going to do here. Don't go home early. You don't know what's coming. That woman stayed for a week. She lived in a motel ate three restaurant meals. She gave in every service. We had three services a day. And she came to me the following Sunday after I got done preaching, and she said, is the man of God going to pray for my son? I said, I don't know. Because God used him in a supernatural way where he sees things. And he'd always take you on a trip. Halfway through his message, he was stopping. He says, uh, God is taking me on a trip. And I, I told her, I said, now, I don't know whether he's going to pray, but I'll tell you this one thing. If he does not pray, now, she told me, she said, I, I ain't got but $20 left. $15 is for the doctor. $5 is for gas to get me from Birmingham back to Knoxville, and you know that must have been years ago when gas was only 15 cents a gallon. Some of you young folks, you, you can't conceive that. But that's when it was cheap. And she said, all I have left is $20, and you ain't going to see no doctor for $15. And she said, I've got to take him back. Do you believe he's going to pray? And I said, I don't know, but I will tell you this one thing. If he does not pray for your child tonight, I will personally take that baby to the man of God's trailer house. We all lived in trailers. And I'll get him to lay hands on that boy before you go home. She said, you'll do that? I said, I'll do it. She went back to her seat. Got in the service that night. I introduced the man of God. And he come flying out there. And he said, I believe God's going to do great things tonight. He said, but before we do this, I'm going to take an offering. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> I hope you all obeyed God tonight when Pastor Parsley asked you to do something. Because that's what triggers many a miracle. It did in this case. And she said, all I have left is $20. And he come out and he said, I believe God's going to do great things tonight. But he said, before I preach, I want you to give God an offering of faith. And I never heard him use that terminology before this. And he said, now, if you don't know what I mean, an offering of faith is giving God something you can't afford. If you can afford it, there's no faith connected to it. And I saw that little woman throw that little baby into the arms of another woman. And he leaped, at, she leaped out into the aisle and came running. He was holding the offering buckets. We were in the fairgrounds auditorium there. I'll never forget this. And she came running down there and threw an offering into the bucket. She was three-quarters of the way back, and she was the first one to the bucket. I leaped off the platform, and I went down and looked in the bucket. Because I'm nosy. I know what the woman had. Because she told me that afternoon. 
And when I looked in that bucket, I saw a $20 bill. I ran behind the platform and I wept like a baby. And I cried out to God and I said, oh God, I've been trying to teach faith to this woman all week. But I said, please, Jesus, give me faith. Like I saw that woman manifest tonight. I don't know whether I could have done that. And you don't know whether you could do it unless you're in a similar situation. And I jumped back on the platform and he started to preach. He was into his message about 10 minutes and he said, I'm being a carried away in the spirit. I said, oh no. Here we go on another trip. And all I have on my mind is that baby boy. And he says, I'm coming up on a white building. Oh, I know it. It's a hospital. I'm on the inside now, and I hear a lot of babies crying. It's the maternity ward. And he said, a little baby was just born. And there's four or five doctors around the table. And I hear one of the doctors saying, the baby won't live to see its first birthday. He said, the baby was born with, this is Brother Allen talking, the baby was born with 12, 16, 20, 26 major diseases. And I come alive, I said, my God, tonight's that baby's night. He said, the doctors are wrong. The boy's alive. And he said, I see the mother getting into an old Ford, packing a suitcase, another lady with her. And he said, I see the Tennessee, Alabama border. He said, that old Ford's pulling into the parking lot. He said, lady, you're here tonight. Bring me your baby now. God is going to give you 26 miracles. Nobody told me this story. I was there. I was an eyewitness to it. And she came and put that baby in his arms. Mama was standing over there the end of the platform. He paced back and forth. He said, I want everybody to stand. Close your eyes. I'm standing with him, pacing with him. I said, I ain't closing my eyes. I said, I've been waiting for this all week. I'm going to be scriptural. I'm going to watch and pray. <laughs> Darlene Bishop, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I'm going to watch and pray. And I watched. And the first thing I saw, those blind eyes, a milky color, whirlpools began to spin around. And all of a sudden, the whirlpool was gone. And I was looking into the eyes of a brown-eyed baby boy. The blind eyes opened. I knew if God opened the eyes, I knew them deaf ears popped. And all of a sudden, the next thing, the arms started cracking and popping like cordwood. And both arms came out. Both legs simultaneously with the arms began to snap and brought both of those legs out. Remember, the boy was born without feet and born without male organs. But here, all of a sudden, and I saw this with my own eyes, God created feet on the little boy that had no feet.
What do you want God to do for you? I've been hearing that ever since I got here. What do you want? Not what you need. What you want? What do you want? What do you want? Uh, anything he wants to give me. I'm tired of that mess. What do you want? Jesus on the main line? Tell him what you want. I said, tell him what you want. Hallelujah. You're going to leave here. Ah, oh, you're going to leave here a different person tonight. This is your night to receive a miracle from God. Hallelujah. A little while ago, you told somebody, I believe you're going to get a miracle. Turn around that same person and say, uh uh-uh. I'm the one going to get the miracle tonight. That's what I'm here for. I'm believing God for myself. I'm going to claim this for myself. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I cannot deny God's power. Brother Allen put that boy down on his brand new feet. No shoes. You don't put shoes on clubs. He had no shoes. Barefoot. Never saw his mama. Never talked. The tongue snapped back into his mouth for the first time. And he started taking off and running to mama. And I'm running right on this trail. And he leaped into his mama's arms and I heard him say his first words, Dwight. said, Mama! I'm telling you something, folks. That was the greatest night that I believe I was in. Because that precipitated other miracles. Twelve wheelchairs on that side. Twelve wheelchairs. And when you see wheelchairs, a lot of them are motorcycle accident victims. Broken backs and hips. No hope. On that side were 15 stretchers they brought in from the hospital. All of a sudden, when they saw that miracle of that little boy, everybody in the wheelchairs... Nobody laid hands on them. But all of them got up like a master sergeant commanded them to rise up. And they come out of the wheelchairs totally healed by the power of the living Christ. Every eye left the wheelchairs and every eye went to the stretchers. Anticipation set in. God never disappointed them. Nobody laid hands on them. No human hands. And everybody in those stretchers got up and walked out. Totally healed by the power of Christ. Ah, A notable miracle has taken place. One of the greatest, I believe, that I've ever seen. And it was precipitated by a $20 offering. That's all she had. You can't buy a miracle for $20. The man of God said, give God an offering of faith. I hope you all did what God told you to do. When this man of God talked about them phone calls. Because when you give, you precipitate an offering. I mean, you participate, precipitate a miracle that's coming your way, especially if you're obedient to God. Now, that woman wrote me a letter, and this will top it off. She went to Knoxville, and she said, I would have walked home just to get a new baby. I would have walked home, but she said, I didn't have to walk, Brother Shambach. She sent me the letter. She said, but you and that preacher left early that night. And I'm standing there, and she said, a little woman came and shook my hand. She was so happy for what God did for me. And she said, there was a folded piece of paper between the palms. 
And she said she left it in my palm. And she said, I'm so glad for you. And she looked in her palm and there was a $20 bill. And other people began to line up. And everybody that shook her hand had the same sensation between the palms. And they come by so fast, she said, I just opened my purse, Brother Shambach, and said, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. <laughs> hey! What do you want? She said, Brother Shambach, I went in the ladies' room and counted all that money. She said, and I counted it, and she told me what it was, and she said, isn't it just like Jesus? She said, I ate in three restaurants every day, gave in three offerings every day, paid the hotel bill. She said, God sent me home with more money than what I came with. And I'll never forget her P.S. P.S. Brother Shambach, you can't beat God given. No matter how much you try. I stole that from her, Perky. I made a book out of it. You just can't beat God given no matter how much you try. Can you take another offering? Uh, maybe some of you missed the first one. And you didn't obey God. And you may have to come down here and turn it loose. I ain't taking no offering. But I, I come here to preach. I didn't get started yet. Last year I got cheated out of. Well, I'm going to make up for it tonight. It's only five after eight. In Tyler, Texas. Brother Parsi always says, make yourself at home. <laughs> I'm going to make myself at home. What do you want God to do for you? Just what do you want? Tell three people what you want. Go ahead now. Tell it. Brother Shambach is grateful for all of you faithful partners and friends whose generous gifts are responsible for bringing this program to multitudes of needy people. Remember, our prayer partners are standing by to pray with you, even after this broadcast comes to a close. You can also reach us by writing to us at Shambach Miracle Revivals, P.O. Box 9009, Tyler, Texas, 75711. If you're in Canada, write to us at P.O. Box 33089, Edmonton, Alberta, T5P 3Z0. You can also visit our website at shambach.org.